Welcome to InvestMart, I'm James Carter, and today I'm talking to our chairman, Paul Clitheroe. Many of you may have first met Paul on his number one rating TV show, Money. For many years, Paul's been an active advocate of financial literacy. He's chair of the government's Financial Literacy Board and Financial Literacy Australia. Today, however, I'm going to ask him a few questions that will give you some insights into why he's involved with InvestMart and what he thinks of some of our services. Hi, Paul. Thanks for coming. Absolute pleasure. So, Paul, could you give us some insight into why you got involved with InvestMart? Oh, look, it's mainly because it's such a, a, a dynamically changing world. Um, I started um, my company, IPAC, some 34-odd years ago as one of Australia's first fee-for-service advisors, because I really thought this commission stuff was just hopelessly biased, didn't like it at all. And so we really felt 34 years ago there was a place for someone where you could pay a fee, and you'd really get kind of like a bespoke tailor. You know, you'd get a really beautifully handmade suit for you. And I still think that's a wonderful model for many Australians. But look, bluntly, you'll need to be an Australian with a bit more money, because the trouble with bespoke is, by definition, you're talking about a lot of professional people's time, and so therefore the cost is high. It, it is simply the way it is. But the issue for me is probably that a cheap suit's always been a cheap suit. But what's really different in the world of money, and I find it quite fascinating, is that technology has just really turned a complete revolutionary, a revolutionary circle to the point where now that advice is a fraction. Uh, it's a fraction of the price it used to be. Let me try and make that simple. Now, 34 years ago, I certainly would have said to a typical investor, you need to own some uh, American shares. And back then, probably would have cost us about 2% to buy them, probably about 2% per annum to actually hold the shares in, in some sort of fund. Whereas now, of course, um, you know, here we can use an exchange traded fund for, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, 10, 20, 50 basis points. So the cost of investing has changed dramatically. But also, I really feel that well, I think there's a terrific place in the market for top quality advice firms. I strongly believe that. The reality is they can't service that many people. That there are, for every, I guess, 10 people who walk in the door of a fee for service firm, there are probably another several hundred Australians are saying, well, look, I'm probably not a big enough investor. And also many Australians, and I respect this, Australians are DIY people. You know, we actually like knocking off the balcony and putting it back on again. Big investors, small investors. So it's no surprise to me that people are saying, look, you know, I'd like to do this from home. I'd like to use technology. I want to see the best in the world. And look bluntly, I want it to be cheap. And there's no reason why you can't have that today. So simply, that's why I'm involved. Yeah, so you think it's a good service for all in all Australians or most Australians with an investment? Well, look, absolutely. I think you've got the time. It's very clear if you look at the, you know, all of the capabilities inside an InvestSmart, or, you know, where you've got intelligent investor, you've got Eureka report, you've got asset allocation models, you've got all sorts of technology games that you can play to, to help you decide on your risk profile, your asset allocation, so on. So, look, in actual fact, you really can do nearly everything online these days. But I'm still very respectful of people who'd really actually rather just spend a bit of time sitting down with a lawyer, an accountant, or a financial planner, and actually getting that, that personal tailored thing going. So the reality is you can do everything online these days. But I really do stress, the big one for me though, is that we're now in an era of low returns. Now when inflation was much higher, now you look at when I started IPAC back in 83, inflation was about 14%. By definition, you're looking at returns of nearly 20% just across basic property and basic shares, just inflation plus five or 6%. Now, if you're paying, say, 2% for that, paying two to get 20, but if you're in an older fashioned model and you're paying 2% to get maybe 6%, and that is a real challenge. Because the one thing I do know about investment is that fees are a certainty, and in particular, when we're anticipating a period of low inflation, low interest rates, and certainly, in my view, lower returns than we've seen in the past, Clearly, you can't afford to be giving up, say, a third of your return in fees. So for me, it's not only the technology revolution, it's actually the investment climate means that fees are becoming a bigger proportion of our return. And what I see in a service like InvestSmart, and the reason I own shares in the company, and the reason I hold some of my investments here, is bluntly, I do think the cost of investing has to come down in this climate, and technology is a brilliant way to do it. InvestMart seems to have been rolling up a number of businesses, uh, Eureka Report, Intelligent Investor. Could you tell us why that's important to the group and what it means to our members? Look, I think the, the one-stop shop is, is rather overplayed as a marketing term. But it's reasonably obvious to me that if you're going to come to a, a very efficient, low-cost, technology-based solution, 
it, it seems to me that you want a reasonable amount of stuff in the supermarket. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that if I'm going to look at investing online or gaining information online, I really don't want half a dozen different sites I'm visiting. So the whole idea inside InvestSmart is that you're a young investor, you're an old investor. You're an, you're an investor with a lot of money, you're an investor maybe with no money at all, and you're looking to gain information, you're looking to gain knowledge. It seems to me that what a really good, transparent technology company would do is say, look, here's a smorgasbord of stuff. Here's the buffet. We have our entrees, we have our main meals. You don't like fish, here's some meat. Uh, you'd like something a bit sweet for dessert, here's your dessert, and would you like to help yourself to a cup of coffee with that? I'm really into the idea that people graze. You know, I don't think we're going to get force-fed investment or, you know, obviously I'm huge on financial literacy. I want people to be better with their money, which is why I chair the federal government's financial literacy board. But I, I've learnt very strongly though that you, know, you, you really can't force-feed people. And what I like again about this technology stuff is I tend to play with InvestSmart's portfolio manager in my jammies at night. <laughs> that sounds a bit lazy, I know, but, but often I've had pretty busy days. And for me, and I guess it depends upon your own sort of biorhythms, and I tend to be a late night person. And for me, you know, that nine, 10 o'clock at night, I've had a bit of dinner and, you know, had, had a cup of tea, whatever. And I actually quite like to potter and have a bit of a play at that time of the night. And I might like to read at that time of the night what's happened in New York, what's going on in Japan, what's the government doing with superannuation. And it's not just about having money to invest, it's about learning, it's about knowledge. And so what I like about InvestSmart is the smorgasbord allows you to come in with no money to invest. You want to learn things. Or you may come in with some money to invest and you want to play at asset allocation, you want to look at a portfolio manager. And so why would a technology company build up, if you like, a full smorgasbord? I think it's going to be so much easier for the consumer to actually get to know and trust one organisation. And let's face it, you know, with technology, who are these people? And so in a sense, if you like, I, I do like the idea of having a, a sort of a, a, tr a trusted name where you're probably doing, it, it's solving a number of your problems. Paul, you've got a lot of experience in giving um, financial advice. However, what would be the best piece of advice you could give to one of our members? Get organised. <laughs> I, I know, look, I, I really look, and I, and I know, I mean, this is what I love about InvestSmart, is parts of InvestSmart I don't use. Um, and, and I think that's really interesting. And I, I think I'm really typical. I mean, for example, Intelligent Investor it does such a wonderful job, uh, you know, with over 10 analysts are coming up with all sorts of research around all sorts of interesting stocks. But funnily enough, that kind of doesn't, it's, it's um, what, what's the word you youngsters would say? It's kind of not my vibe. Yeah. Um, uh, it probably was when I was younger. And, and I do kind of like, you know, reading about different stocks as part of my knowledge base. But you see, getting back to answering your question is, I actually don't think that decision is what makes me money. You know, I actually think what's always made me money is, is actually the simple stuff. And, and look, I know we'd all like the next share winner, the next property winner, whatever. But the answer I always give to people is, why do you think I'm still working? Now, if I actually knew the, if I had some, if I had some miraculous inside, you know, I'd be a billionaire and I'd go and buy a large boat and live in the Mediterranean, I guess. But I'm not. You know, I'm a pretty normal sort of person. And I look back, and yes, I've done okay in property. Yes, I've done okay in shares. But where I've done best is by being organised. In other words, do I have positive cash flow? Because at the end of the day, if I'm spending more than I'm earning, I've got nothing to invest. So for me, it's about organisation. That's through the budget process. It's about surplus income. And certainly then organisation, and this, of course, is, is where InvestSmart's portfolio manager comes into play. Because when I start to get myself organised and I've got money to invest, I then don't want to own investments all over the place that I lose track of. I mean, we've still got what Australians have now lost, what, tens of billions of dollars in superannuation because we tend to have too many super funds. And it seems to me, again, that it, as I start to invest, I've also got to be organised around my investment. And that's where the portfolio manager, which I use, comes in, in real, particularly it's free, appeals to me no end, uh, but it comes in incredibly handy. So what I'm saying is I think the first thing you do, the difference I see in people who've got done better with money than not, is actually not the miracle share investment. It's actually not the miracle property investment. It's the fact over a period of time they've been organised, they've consistently invested in markets, they don't, if you like, go into a, a lemming run and, and buy, buy, buy as the market booms, and equally, when the market collapses, they don't go sell, sell, sell. But we all know we should buy cheap and sell expensive. At every piece of government history, reserve bank history, central bank history, in every country that keeps these records, we can prove conclusively that the average investor actually buys expensive 
and sells cheap. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's also part of being organised. It's about this. I know this sounds pretty dull. I know we'd all much rather buy a share that triples in value. In, in my opinion, <laughs> that's as much good luck as good management. Be organised. And I, I think, again, that's a key part of the Invest Smart offer is being organised in your information, be organised in your knowledge, use a portfolio manager so you're organised your investments and have a strategy. And if people would do that, then if you're making investment decisions inside that framework, over time, you will do well. Paul, as a user of InvestMart's Portfolio Manager, what is your opinion of it? Uh, look, the portfolio manager really appeals to me. And look, I, I, look, I'm being a bit flippant when I say free always appeals to me. But I did say, you know, I think, think you know, very much up front to start with is that in what I believe is going to be a lower return climate, you know, why am I saying that? Because obviously we're struggling for global economic growth. Australia, we're actually doing better than people think. You look at the unemployment rate and so on. Things, you know, things aren't as bad as the newspapers and the, the media is, is making out. Um, but... I don't, I'm very conscious that I can't have fees representing a quarter or a third of my potential investment returns. And so what I like about the portfolio manager is that, like many people, I, I do you know, own a, a group of different investments. I think every institution, including InvestSmart, would like to have a relationship with 100% of a person's investments. I don't actually think that's going to happen very often. So the reality is over the years, I've accumulated a few shares from demutualizations. I got a couple of shares when, um, when my dad passed away as an inheritance. Um, I've got a bit of this, a bit of that. Uh, I've also over time had shares in different uh, institutions, wraps, their portfolio managers, which in my view, look, they're a commodity. I shouldn't be paying much for those. I find them too expensive. So when I saw InvestSmart's free portfolio manager before, I, uh, which was the, the theory was coming together, it's only recently been launched. And so, yeah, I, I did find that an extremely useful place to, to list my investments. Um, I initially made a mistake of getting daily updates. Now, that was a little bit too much for me. I'm not. I'm just not that eager. So yeah. I put myself on weekly updates now, which is which is uh, which is working extremely well for me. Uh, what I like about it is that, in a sense, is that I mean, obviously, you know, some weeks I'm up. I might be up a percent. Some weeks I might be down three percent. Who knows? And, and it's not that those numbers cause me to race in and buy more or panic and start selling. What it does is I, I find the alerts a really useful trigger to keep reminding myself that my money's important, and I find those alerts. It just keeps me in touch with my money, and also I know where it all is. So the idea of a virtual wrap, I think, is it's certainly one of the things I find really stimulating you know, at InvestSmart. InvestSmart's portfolio manager shows uh, investors their true asset allocation. Why is asset allocation so important? Well, if it's going to be difficult to earn returns in this climate, what's going to be my driver of those returns? Is it going to be the fact that I choose stock X? No, it won't be, and it never will be. The key issue for me is am I 30% in Australian equities and 20% in international and 20% in property and 10% in cash? That, that's obviously what we call asset allocation. And so the primary issue for me is my age and my risk profile. Uh, I've got three young adult children. I don't want them investing like me. And bluntly, probably my three young adult kids are, I'm probably a little older than the average InvestSmart member. And my, my kids are all under 20, uh, 29. And they're just probably a bit younger or just getting close to, yeah, getting close to that sort of age. And so, you know, my kids say, oh, you know, Dad, so, you know, should we go out and try buy 20 stocks and diversify our risk? And I go, no. And they go, well, why not? It's worked for you. And I said, no, no, it's worked for me because as a younger Australian, I concentrated risk. And, and in a sense, you know, I, I'd love to give the perfect answer for every InvestSmart member and every Australian about how you invest, but it's nonsensical. Yeah. You know, we, we invest around our risk profile, our, our, if you like, our sleep at night test. If you buy something and you lose sleep, You've bought the wrong thing. I don't care how good it is. So it's all about asset allocation. InvestSmart offer 10 diversified portfolios. These portfolios are available for direct investment and they're structured as SMAs. What do you think of the SMA structure? Oh, look, the SMA, the self-managed account, I think is a, a really good idea. A, a, look, a problem inside a, a typical managed fund unit trust, which I'm also an admirer of, but one of the issues in there is that you're bulked in with everyone else. And um, you know, I sit on the board of a, a number of companies, including listed investment companies and companies running uh, managed funds. I'm, and I think they're a look, huge improvement for investors compared to where we used to be. Um, but the, the challenge in a sense is you're, you're always thinking to yourself around trading policy inside the fund and also distribution policy. 
You don't really know who your typical investor is. I'm 61, I invest a certain way. I would not expect my 29 year old son to invest the same way I do. And the same with an investment member. So what I like about an SMA, a self-managed account, is that in terms of determining your asset allocation, and in particular if you want to concentrate risk because you're younger or you prefer to spread risk because you're older, what I like about the SMA is that it's yours and you actually can be far more in control over whether it's your super fund doing the investing, your company structure, your family trust. Because again, a unit trust by definition, it knows it amongst its tens of thousands of investors, you've got all of those things. And so it's very difficult as a manager to really align yourself with each investor's needs. You know, you, you have to be a generic pool, right? And so what I like about SMAs is, is it enables you to take far more control over the process. And while I never ever want anyone to invest because of tax, you know, in my opinion, you look to make a great investment decision and then you worry about the tax structure second. Like you get your tax structure right and you make a poor investment the tax structure is not going to help you. Yes. Like a poor investment, yeah. it's a poor investment, it's a poor investment. So the trick is we try to do our best to try and make good investments. Um, and then, then, in a sense, we worry about the structure. So for me, SMAs are very useful. And, I, look, and, I, and this is what I enjoy about this investment. It, it's not dictating a strategy. And what it's saying is here is our smorgasbord. Here is Eureka information. Here is intelligent investor information, which is more share-based. I really like the idea of saying, no dictatorship, it's a democracy, it's about you making choices, but here, here are the, all the things you need. Here's information, here's the free portfolio manager to keep things under track, here's do it yourself, an intelligent investor, or here's, a, here's the portfolio that does it for you, and you can literally fill in a prospectus online and you know it, it's done. And I, I, it's not you telling me what to do, I'm deciding what to do. Investmart's job is to give me the tools to allow me to make that choice. Great, thank you. So, yeah, so SMAs give you control. Correct. And they also give you options. And, they're and particular, op particular options that will fit my tax position. I, 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 don't, I've, I don't really want to be in a basket of super funds and individual investors and company structures and family trusts. Because I, I, I think I'll end up getting a good result, but I think we're all quite different in that structure. In your recent interview with the ASX, you talked about younger investors being more concentrated and older investors being more diversified. In saying that, do you think younger people could find value in the intelligent investor offering and in, in the end pick winning shares? Oh, look, any, any aged investor, and I need to be careful because many of my friends spend far more time on their portfolios than I do, and many do subscribe to Intelligent Investor, and many really Look, you know, in some cases, I'm not even convinced they're saying they're going to get higher returns than me. I think in some cases, they just really enjoy it. But younger people, gee, it's more the learning, you know. It's, it's when you're young, what are you doing? You're, you're basically educating and preparing yourself. Mm. And what I like about when I hear young people, and I, by, by young, I mean anyone under about 60, uh, or for that matter, uh, I, I, my, my, I've got a, a father-in-law um, who's getting quite elderly. He still loves this share stuff. So it, it's very personal. But yeah. for me, it, I would certainly say to my kids, if they said, hey, Dad, do we just dump our money in a self-managed uh, account or do we you know, dump it in an ETF? I'd say, look, guys, that's great. But the advantage of actually taking, doing a bit of your own research and taking a bit of accountability for your own decision making, I'm less fussed about whether they make a good decision. I'm more excited about the education because yeah. they've probably got 80 years of investing in front of them. So better to learn now. And if they, you know, if they make a $500 decision and it doesn't go that well, Lesson learned, move on. Thanks for joining us today. That was My fantastic pleasure. and uh, we'll see you soon. You will.